Today I'd like to talk to you about the wiring aspect of the oven conversion to become a powder coat oven. The oven itself has got four elements. It's got a top element, a grill element which is on the top, it's got a circular fan forced element and it's got a bottom element. This is what we want to control, but how? I've got an SSR here, a 40 amp. Now if you want to control that using those and you want to either have them all on or all off, that's fine. You can run them through one of these. But what happens if you want individual control? Do you Add a extra relay for each element, which would mean four relays. And then how do you then control from the temperature controller, switching on and off? You have a series of switch, so you have to be here to decide what you want. Or well, it's easier to wire it up to use the electronics of the oven. But when you get your oven, I got mine from a hard rubbish collection. The neighbor up the road was throwing it out, not knowing what's wrong with it. You have to strip the covers off and then examine all the wires. You'll soon be able to smell or see the electrical problem. If there's black Black, yellowing, arcing, burnt smell, anything like that, you know where the problem is. This one didn't have any wiring problem. Then you have the electronics. Now that is where a lot of people throw them out because they the timer mightn't work or something mightn't work and then they ring up the supplier and it costs almost as much as the oven for the spare part. So they throw it out. You then have to work out where to tap on the power system to control it. This Technica, it doesn't have any power to it until the clock is set. So in here you have to set the clock. So unless your clock is set, you can get your multimeter <laughs> measure everything and it's already in zero you think what's going on here that's because the clock's not set so once the clock's set then you can check your terminals to see where the power is and the main power comes in well here and here but the trouble is it depends on the electronics you don't get power to the elements until the thermostat is off zero so you have to set it to 50 degrees or 60 degrees then you get power so if you're tapped in and you're using some of it you won't be able to control it so you have to work out where is the best place to tap into the power to control all the elements using the electronics and the controls on the heater and the best place to do that is with the thermostat the thermostat has a probe thermocouple and it says right getting hot it sends a signal to the thermostat. The thermostat has a relay. It goes click and it's on. So on this particular one, this is where the relay part of the thermostat is. So rather than ripping it out and replacing that, you tap either side. So you tap the in and the out. So in between is a relay switch. So when the oven is not on, it's open. No contact. When it is heating up, you switch it on to say 50 degrees, it then contacts, heats up, heats up, 50 degrees, switches off. So that's how that works. And that's what you have to mimic. And like I said, it doesn't work unless you put thermostat on. So this is where you have to also work out how you program it. Just say you want your 200 degrees. You can set your thermostat on your oven to 190, below the temperature you want. Then you set your temperature controller to 200 or 220, whatever you want monitored. The oven switches on, so you get everything's powered, everyone's energized so the power is running you don't even have to switch this on at that moment you don't have to program it so as it's heating up heating up it's going up you program it for 220 as soon as you hit the 220 the setting your temperature the temperature controller you relay so that means you'll have power going through the relay through the electronics of the oven and the SSR up to say your 190 degrees then when it gets to 190 the oven may go 195 197 200 depends on how accurate it is and how long before it drops to it may drop down to 180 before it goes back up to 190 so this is just depends on the quality and the accuracy of your relay in your thermostat just say it gets up to 190 the relay in the thermostat switches off however you're still controlling everything else through the power of your SSR so that keeps working until 200 then it switches off so it may be 200 201 199 200 so it depends on how accurate that is so then that keeps the balance the oven it says oh I'm over 190 I've switched off so that's how you keep the control so always set your oven below the temperature you want and your temper controller to the temperature you want and make sure that the difference between is more than the inaccuracy of your oven temperature control so that's why I've added the larger yellow cable thicker cables here either side just by testing then you have to power your temperature controller like I said there's no power unless the clock is set and when you go to tap into here into the, the actual selector it doesn't work unless the ovens on. so you have to tap into a position 
position where the power comes in and when the oven is switched on you've got 240 volt connection there so that's where you may have to tap into the mains again depending on where the controller is power goes in one side out the other so I've, I've had to piggyback the connection where the where the live goes in and piggyback the connection where the neutral goes in so once you've done that you've basically checked your wiring you've checked all your elements Everyone's sort of working okay. At the back there, you'll see the big orange cable. That's to the 240. This was in the wall, so it didn't have it. So you need to have a big enough power point with 15 amps, 20 amps. To handle the power your normal lighting socket or maybe not in the garage may be may not be strong enough so check with your electrician that you've got enough capacity to pull the current i've had special 20 amp 30 amp wiring put in so that's why i can use it so then you do a test and the problem with this fan this particular model has a overheating fan so that comes on to keep it all cool internally unfortunately that's on all the time and you may say what's the big deal there well they've got vents and the vents blow out in front of the door so if you're walking out up with your freshly powder coated sprayed job and the powder is all loose you're pushing it in front of a fan so the fan will blow it all off and cause problems so that's on all the time on this particular model so that's a problem but even if it was off and then turned on it's probably going to come on when you're heating it up anyway so then i just added a on off switch for this fan this is the fan that cools the outside of the oven just tapped into it so i have a fan temper controller an ssr and that's it i've also added a thermocouple you can buy these type which is the short type and put it where you like but I found that I was going to need to put it where the drawer hangers are that sort of thing but it's too short doesn't there's an insulation between here and the main body so that wouldn't fit so as these photos will show I've modified it to have the 50 mil one so the end of the probe is actually inside the oven away from the the cover so with the controls here I can set it for top element top element and grill top element bottom element top element grill bottom element top element fan force and it just goes on so I still retain all that so if I want quick heat I can turn it up to get the temperature for the whole oven to 200 degrees quickly then I can say right if the fan force is blowing around is blowing the powder coat off I can turn that fan force off and just use the top and bottom elements the top element is exposed and the bottom element is under a cover so if the top element say burns or overheats the top of the job I can turn that off and just use the bottom element so keeping the controls if possible is a good idea having it fully adjustable and controlled saves you a lot of hassles I could have mounted this into here cut the glass front out cut the, uh, the stainless steel surround and all that but because the oven's 900 wide and it's about three four hundred high that's fine if you've got a long flat job but i'm going to make this oven so as it's horizontal when jobs can hang down that way or something like a wheel goes on the trays but then i've also got it so as it sits up the frame will be the next video so as it sits up a long job can just hang in the center of the oven and have plenty of clearance and just hang on the hook so that's the next stage there you just get your this is the end cover on here cut out your rectangle this is the hole for the fan switch i'll be painting that black and then laser engraving some instructions and on off on here for the setup so you then fit your you have to make sure you got clearance this way because i'm going to be tilting it i have to make sure that there's no loose electrical connectors going to touch the body and short out or electrocute me so working out the position i couldn't have it here i couldn't have it there so this was where the best position was and the switch could go there long enough for the thermocouple to reach the back so i've just fitted that now so that will go along there all fitted in there you have to make sure that you put your cover on but don't do it up just have it sitting there loose unconnect all your cabling check and test before you put the cover on undo all your connectors slide the temperature controller through then have your locking bracket there slip it on then with the cover tilted you can tighten up all your screws and all that so when when you're doing your wiring make sure you've got enough room to be able to pull and move it around don't just just because it's 300 from there to there don't make it 300 make it four 450 500 so you can manipulate everything for later work because i've had to pull underneath here and over here and back there it's not a simple job to get into the wiring you have to pull off a few panels so make it as easy as possible for yourself at the design stage so i'll just be spraying that black next then making it up the frame so as it can tilt and will be on wheels so as i can move it around the workshop tilt it up for the storage area then we'll be able to get stuck into some powder coating so if you found this video interesting subscribe tell your friends spread the word if you haven't tell me why not and as always thanks for watching <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>